Good evening, Mary News Media TV family. Welcome back to the channel for another news update. And in the news this evening, sentencing for convicted wife killer Beachy Stout postponed to September. Sentencing has been postponed for Portland businessman Everton Beachy Stout McDonald and the co convict Oscar Barnes, who in March were found guilty of murder and a conspiracy to murder in the 2020 killing of McDonald's wife Tonya. McDonald and the Barnes were scheduled to be sentenced in the Supreme Court Thursday morning, but the hearing was postponed amid the absence of the antecedent report and the trial judge's Chester stamp. It is now scheduled to take place September 19, 2024. Tonya was gruesomely murdered on July 20, 2020 on the main road in Sherwood Forest in Portland. She was stabbed repeatedly, her throat slashed, and the Toyota Axio motor car she was driving, along with her body burned. McDonald, who was Tonya's husband at the time of her murder, was arrested and charged with the killing. Oscar Barnes was later arrested. Both arrests came after police were tipped off that Denville and Bob Lamainot could assist them greatly in their investigations into the murder. After they arrested him at his house in Portland, he confessed to his involvement, claiming that he had been contracted by McDonald for $3 million to kill his wife. However, Maynard claimed that because he could not carry out the crime exactly as he was instructed to stab and burn her body, he ended up subcontracting the killing to Oscar Barnes, who he said murdered Tonya all by himself. Man dead police seek persons of interest in Yorktown gang feud. One man is dead and the police are seeking two persons of interest in what they say is an ongoing gang feud in Yorktown, Clarendon. The deceased has been identified as a 45-year-old laborer, Kenroy Peter Thane, of a Yorktown settlement address. It is reported that the incident happened about 8.15 p.m. on Wednesday along the Yorktown main road in the vicinity of York Circle. According to reports, residents heard loud explosions and summoned the police. Upon their arrival, Thane's body was seen lying face down along the roadway with what appeared to be multiple gunshot wounds to the upper body and the back. He was taken to the Maypen Hospital where he was pronounced dead. Further investigations have revealed that the gunmen traveled in two motor vehicles to the location. The police say a number of intelligence-led operational activities targeting the gang have been carried out in the past, resulting in some of its members being killed, displaced or arrested, including the leader. However, a gang feud is seemingly brewing, the police said. The Yorkertown era is one of the hotspots within the division and is known for upsurges in violence over the years. As such, several police operations are routinely undertaken within the community. The era is also usually known for reprisals and counter-reprisals, Whenever there is a murder or shooting incident, hence the police say their presence in the area is crucial at this time. Daniel Rose alleged the killer remanded until June 6. Coyote Sachel, the dental assistant accused of the murder of 8-year-old Daniel Rowe, was on Thursday remanded until June 6, 2024. The court was told Thursday that the defense is still awaiting outstanding documents from the prosecution in the matter. Police say Sachel, who was charged with murder for the June 8, 2023 killing of young Daniel, was the intimate partner of Daniel's father. Daniel was abducted from Breton Primary School in Portmore, St. Catherine. She was later found on Roosevelt Avenue in St. Andrew with her throat slashed. She died at Bustamante Hospital for Children two days after the ordeal. 19-year-old facing housebreaking and larceny charges after allegedly stealing TV. A 19-year-old man has been charged with housebreaking and larceny after allegedly using a ladder to enter a home and making off with a 32-inch TV and a portable water heater. Charged is Cal Black of Valentine Castle Drive, Kingston 19. According to the Constance Ring Police, on Friday, May 10, Black used a ladder to climb the rear of a house and remove the two window blades. He entered and stole one 32-inch Samsung Smart TV valued at approximately $30,000 and one portable water heater reportedly valued at $15,000.
The matter was reported to the police and an investigation was launched. The stolen items were later reportedly found in Black's possession. On Wednesday, May 15, the accused was pointed out to the police and arrested. He later confessed to the crime and was subsequently charged, the police said. Investigations continue. Teacher getting medical care after mental breakdown at the Sydney Pagan STEM Academy. The teacher from Sydney Pagan STEM Academy in St. Elizabeth, who had a mental breakdown at the school on Wednesday, is continuing to receive medical care. Students were reportedly traumatized on Wednesday by the behavior of the educator and it resulted in physical classes being suspended for two days. Students sitting external examinations have not been affected by the disruption. Speaking with the news on Thursday morning, Jamaica Teachers Association President Leighton Johnson urged the teachers to not to suffer in silence. The teacher is in a medical facility and she is being um, treated at this time. Um, of course, uh, as an association, we continue to um, advocate for uh, mental health issues, teachers with mental health issues, and we also want to encourage um, the nation as best that the stigma that comes with um, men mental health is one that we ought to, as best as possible, try to eradicate. Um, this is a situation that can happen to anyone. And we hope as best as possible that um, our members are taking the best care of their physical wealth, physical um, state of being and their psychological health. Mental service urges the Jamaicans to be prepared for active hurricane season. The 2024 Atlantic hurricane season officially begins on June 1 and the forecasters are suggesting that it will be a very active one. As a result, head of the weather branch at the Meteorological Service of Jamaica, Rohan Brown, is urging Jamaicans to be prepared. Speaking at a disaster preparedness town hall meeting held at the Errol Flynn Marina, Port Antonio, Portland, on May 9, Brown informed that last year was the fourth most active hurricane season on record. He noted that at the end of the season last year in November, there was an era of low pressure that moved across Jamaica called a potential tropical cyclone 22. That created a little damage, it produced heavy prolonged rainfall, gusty winds, and it affected 10 to 14 parishes, especially southwestern, central and eastern parishes. When we measured the rainfall, there were 30 stations that were used in the analysis, and all 30 stations in those two and a half days exceeded their monthly rainfall, Brown stated. We had rock slides, fallen trees, down the power lines, and the communities were inundated. Now if that little system that was not a tropical storm or hurricane, but just an era of low pressure, that moved across Jamaica and created such damage, can you imagine if it was a tropical storm or hurricane, we need to be prepared, he emphasized. Brown pointed out that right across the world, meteorologists and the climate scientists are saying that this year is going to be an active year. And the reasons why they're saying that is we're currently in an El Nino condition right now, and that a condition is going to become neutral in the next couple of weeks. And when you reach the peak of the hurricane season, you're going to have something that is called La Nina, he said. That system weakens the wind shear, and therefore you have more energy, more convective activity, and the storms are easier to form in that sort of condition. That is something we are concerned about, he added. Brown noted that another area of concern is the above normal sea surface temperatures, pointing out that, so far for April, the sea temperatures have been high. St. Andrew businessman slapped with fraud charges A 39-year-old businessman has been charged with fraudulent conversion after allegedly receiving payment for car headlights he did not hand over. Charged is Andrew Palmer of Harborview Road, Stonehill, St. Andrew. Reports indicate that a man visited Palmer's business establishment, where he allegedly made payments amounting to $115,000 for a 2018 Honda Civic right-handed drive headlight. He reported received a receipt with the details of his purchase and was told that he would receive his purchase item within two weeks. 
After several months had passed and the man did not receive the item, a report was made to the police. Subsequent investigations revealed that Palmer used the funds for his personal benefit. He was later arrested and charged. His court date is being finalized.